Hello guys, this is Dr. Mahindra in your Forensic Medicine Toxicology Faculty here with another video on Forensic Fast Forward 3.0 on the topic of Dermatology. We had earlier seen a quiz on this, so now we'll be seeing the questions and explanations for it. A patient was found dead with multiple cut injuries on the body. During examination, you find certain cut injuries looking like laceration. So, which of the body parts is most likely to be expected? See, do remember friends, it is not incise looking laceration. Here, an incise incision looking like a laceration. That means, it is a lacerated looking incised one. Fine. In which of the body parts you can see this? In which of the body parts you can see this? See, normally, lacerated looking inside wound is very commonly seen in a bony parts, in a body parts like uh, uh, axilla and scrotum, where you have multiple skin creases. So, wherever you have skin crease, you can expect this uh, inside wound looking like laceration. Okay, this is called lacerated looking inside wound, very commonly seen with scrotum. Okay. And if it is incise looking laceration, you can expect that on a bony prominence like scalp, forehead, uh, you have a zygoma, elbow, iliac crest, shin, in all these places you can expect. But this is lacerated looking inside, incision. A victim has been tortured by repeatedly immersing him in water and taken out after some time. This method of torture is referred as. See, there are multiple torture methods you must be know here, it must be knowing. Here you have, uh, it's very simple. But there might be a confusion between option A and option B. Option B that is wet submarine, wherein again there is a component of immersion and dunking again there is a component of immersion. What is the difference between two? Wet submarine is one where the head alone is immersed under water, whereas dunking is when the whole body, whole victim is immersed under water. Here I mentioned the person is immersed under water, I have not mentioned about head alone. So you can choose dunking as the option for this. Dunking is the better option for this. What is hydrocution? You know that it is a type of drowning, it is not a type of torture. And bastinado, this is also called as phalanca, wherein uh, there is repeated uh, beating on the source. Phalanca also called as bastinado. A married female has come to ER with multiple blunt injuries, alleging torture by her husband. Whoever being the husband or in-laws, the relatives of the husband of a woman, subjecting the female to cruelty shall be punished with three years imprisonment also liable for fine under dash section. So do remember friends, it is not dowry death. Only if the female dies because of the dowry demand and torture, you can say dowry death, then that will be inflict indicating 304B. But here it is not the death, it is only the torture. If it's only the cruelty, mental or physical cruelty to the female, married female by the husband or in-laws, it is punished under the section 498A IPC, 498A. I have given few other sections, so let us see that as well. 304A is a one which gives punishment for death due to medical negligence. Death due to medical negligence. If any death due to rash and negligent act, that is punishable under 304A IPC with two years imprisonment without without fine. But for us, like uh, when a patient dies due to medical negligence, we can punish that with 304A IPC. And 304B, as I told you, this is the section that gives punishment for dowry death. This is a section that gives punishment for dowry death. Okay, 497 IPC, this was a section that was giving punishment for adultery. But now the section 497 is decriminalized. Its adultery is a ground only for civil charges. It's a ground for divorce. It's not a crime. A man fell down from a height of 35 feet. Eyewitness say that uh, he landed on his feet. Fall from height, landing on feet. Which of the following injury is possible? A gutter fracture of skull with cervical spine injury, a pawn fracture of skull with cervical spine injury, a depressed fracture of skull with cervical spine injury, ring fracture of foramen magnum with lumbar spinal injury. Do remember friends, gutter fracture is one which is due to oblique bullet. Right or a glancing shot. If the trauma is to glancing or oblique, it will produce gutter fracture. And pawn fracture of skull is typically seen with a skull which is pliable, so soft, particularly in infants. If it is in infants or if it is newborn, born just out of obstetric forces delivery, you can expect pawn fracture skull. Depressed fracture of skull is commonly seen with any weapon with a uh, like a like hammer, wherein it is so heavy. The striking surface is so smaller, 
which can cause a fracture and the fractured segment can get depressed into the cranial compartment. That's what is called depressed fracture. And sometimes the pattern of the fractured segment it might reflect the pattern of the weapon. That's why it is called signature fracture. Okay. But in this case, falling from height, landing on feet, ring fracture would be the ideal option because this is a fracture on the skull base. It's on the skull base where the fracture line runs around from and magnum. It is due to indirect violence to the base of skull where the person falls from height, landing on feet, the force transmitted, it can fracture the tibia, it can fracture the neck of femur, it can fracture the lumbar vertebra. You can as well find out the fracture line around from and magnum. The ideal option for this question would be ring fracture with from and magnum. A 14 year old boy was hit on the side of head with a baseball bat with during practice. A laceration with palpable bony fragment was found in the wound. After 5 hours, the boy died. Okay, it's an acute hemorrhage. It's an acute hemorrhage. What is the most likely cause of death? See, the clue, the clue here is the hit is on the side of the head. Temporal region with a baseball bat, so blow trauma. And you have a fracture as well. And within 5 hours, the boy died. Okay, so the, this is the typical case of epidural hemorrhage, acute epidural hemorrhage, where there is any blow trauma to the side of the head, the temporal bone will get fractured. If it is tyrion, under the temporal bone will get fractured. And under the tyrion, you have got the middle meningeal artery, which is likely to get ruptured. When the middle meningeal artery is likely to get ruptured, the person will, victim will die within few hours. That is nothing but epidural or extradural hemorrhage. It's not subdural because subdural is not commonly seen with uh, blow trauma. It is preferably seen with the trauma with acceleration, deceleration impact, which there is a jerking and shaking. Okay, so this is an epidural hemorrhage case. 77 year old man who is active, actually active, is usually active, now barely talks. Sleeps most of the time. His daughter recalls that he fell from a horse about a week back before the mental changes began. Which of the following is the most likely source of bleeding? See, this is an elderly person falling down, having a trivial trauma. After a week, the person has got all the symptoms. Okay, so typical bleeding. This is a case of SDH, subdural hematoma. Right, very commonly seen with the elderly person. You have got the bridging veins. The bridging veins can get ruptured. That results in subdural hemorrhage. Since it is so slender veins, like uh, it will cause slow oozing and the slow oozing over a period of time, it gets accumulated and the accumulation of blood, it causes brain compression, the person develops symptoms. Okay. So that is the reason why it presents after few weeks, sometimes even months. Okay. And this is not epidural. This is subdural hemorrhage, subdural hemorrhage. Any, any elderly person coming with this kind of typical, typical history, you have to suspect this subdural hemorrhage and do remember this subdural hemorrhage is also commonly seen with child abuse battered baby syndrome or shaken baby syndrome this is very much typically common if it is av malformation it can result in subarachnoid hemorrhage if it's circle of phyllis it can also result in subarachnoid hemorrhage middle meningeal artery just now we have seen that it results in epidural hemorrhage Sitaram, 40 year old man, met with an accident, comes to ER with engaged veins, pallor, rapid weak pulse, faint heart sound, chest pain. The diagnosis, diagnosis is pretty straightforward, that is cardiac tamponade, because the features are suggestive of Beck's triad. Okay, a combination of uh, hypotension, muffled heart sounds and raised to JVP. We can as well see Kussbaum's sign and pulses paradoxes. What is the treatment for this condition? Treatment for this condition is drainage of the blood that is pericardiosynthesis we can drain the blood and the person will be fine very commonly seen with blunt trauma chest in road traffic accidents motor vehicle accidents a dead body is recovered with multiple gunshot wounds abrasion collar is seen in the entry wound which of the following cannot be determined from abrasion collar which is not determined range of firearm is not determined because abrasion collar is can be seen in many ranges it can be seen in close near distant we cannot differentiate the range only based on the presence of abrasion collar we can find out the direction of shot because if it is perpendicular bullet entry it should be a circular abrasion collar if it is oblique bullet entry it should be oval abrasion collar we can find out and presence of abrasion collar itself it says that it's a rifle firearm because Abrasion collar is seen due to the gyrating effects of the bullet, so it should be rifle firearm. We can approximately find out the diameter of the bullet itself. 
A dead body is found to have a marks like branching off a tree on the front of chest. The most likely cause of death could be due to. Is it firearm, lightning injury, injuries due to bomb blast, road traffic accident? It is straightforward, very simple question. These burns are called as filigree burns, which is commonly seen with lightning. Filigree burns, arborescent burns, or Lichtenberg markings. Okay. So we have many names for it, very synonym, many synonyms for it. And we have one more uh, sign which is seen with decomposition, which is also branching, that is marbling. Marbling is green color. An unknown body brought for autopsy with multiple gunshot wounds. On autopsy, two bullets have been recovered and preserved. Which of the following would be most useful to determine which gun was used? Primary and secondary markings on the bullet. Yes, it is used. The markings of the bullet are primarily used for identifying the gun. We call it as bullet fingerprinting. Right? We need to know the marking. We need to examine the markings on the bullet. Primary markings are due to rifling pattern. Secondary markings are due to irregularities. We compare both the markings on the both the bullets, test bullet and crime bullet. Then we'll find out uh, the we'll, we'll we'll identify which gun was used for shooting. Range of firearm, no. Appreciation, appearance of the wound, no. Appearance of the wound will help us to find out which range it is, not primarily uh, the identification of gun itself. Helixometer, what is helixometer? Helixometer is one which is used to examine the inner surface of the barrel. Okay, it's an instrument to examine the inner surface of the barrel. An 18 year old uh, girl comes with alleged history of sexual assault for two hours ago. You have seen multiple such lesions on the left forearm. You can see the injuries on the image. Which of the following will be more suggestive of artificially made wound? So which is more suggestive of pseudobrus? You know, pseudobrus are produced by application of calotropis juice, uh, semicarpus anacardium juice, which is how to differentiate a true bruise from a pseudobrus. Bright red wound, more suggestive of true, not pseudo. The wound margins are well defined with small vesicles covering on its surface. Yes, this is suggestive of pseudobrose. If you see multiple vesicles, well defined margins, pseudobrose. The true bruise will be having irregular margins, not well defined margins. And inflammation at the site of wound and excavation of blood present, both are suggestive of true bruise. Unconscious male RT patient brought to ear with, with such injuries. These are the injuries. And uh, incised looking lacerated wounds can be differentiated from incised wounds by all except. How will you differentiate a spit laceration from an incision? Microscopic examination of margins, yes, it is useful. Microscopic visualization of tissue, which is, yes, it's useful. Enzyme biochemistry, see, enzyme biochemistry and histochemistry are useful for basically to determine time since injury, not for whether it is laceration or incision. Presence of crushed hair bulb, yes, it is seen only with laceration, not with incision. 28 year old man, victim of RTA, hospitalized with issue of blunt injury abdomen and hypotension, following a true except. Spleen is the most common organ to be injured, yes, that's true. Liver is the most common organ to be affected in blunt trauma abdomen, yes, that's also true. Alphabetical lacerations are seen with liver, no friends, it is not liver, it should be spleen. So this answer is false statement. Peritonitis is more commonly associated with large intestine rupture. That is also true. Alphabetical laceration means laceration will be look, looking like L, Y, something like that. And these laceration very typically seen with spleen, not with liver. Vadal stride. What is vadal stride? First of all, see vadal stride is one. It is seen when a pediatric child is hit by a car. Not run over. Hit. A child is hit by a car. When a child is hit by a car, the primary impact will be at the femur. Secondary impact will be at the chest or abdomen. When the person is thrown on the road, the tertiary impact will be on the head. So the person can present with femoral fracture, injury to chest and abdomen and a head injury as well. Okay, this is called vas vadal stride, typically seen with pediatric pedestrian hit by a car. 26 year old man was rushed to casualty with history of seizures followed by injury to the head against the wall. Examination reveals impact consciousness. Otoscopy revealed hemotympanum. What is the most likely cause of this presentation? Extradural hemorrhage, subdural hemorrhage, intraventricular hemorrhage, and basilar fracture. Do remember, friends, it indicates basilar fracture, particularly middle cranial force of fracture. Hemotympanum. Presence of hemotympanum or bleeding from the ear, CSF leaking, that is CSF otoria, battle sign, all these signs suggest to walk middle cranial force of fracture. 
on the converse if the person presents with black eye bleeding from the nose csf coming from the nose or a csf rhinorrhea you can think of anterior cranial fossa fracture but this one hemotympanum more likely towards middle cranial fossa fracture about the injuries of rta rolling injuries seen with back seat passengers see rolling injuries are seen with pedestrian hit by a vehicle with low chassis when a vehicle with low chassis hit the pedestrian the pedestrian will be rolled on the road suffering circumferential injury all over the body that's called rolling injury which is seen with pedestrian not with back seat passenger not with back seat passenger this is false anterior dislocation of hip with front seat passenger that's wrong because you don't see a anterior dislocation of hip instead you see posterior dislocation of hip spare foot marks driver yes that is to broken windshield steering wheel impact with driver that is true this is true spare foot marks seen with front seat passenger that is also true because of the broken windshield about bumper injuries secondary impact injury no this is not secondary impact injury it should be primary impact injury can be seen in femur is it possible yes see uh, bumper injuries are commonly seen with usually seen with tibia but that doesn't mean they should not be seen with femur it can be seen with femur as well that depends on the height of the victim and the height of the vehicle fracturous wedge shape yes that's true presence of bumper injuries indicate the pedestrian run over by the vehicle no it should be the pedestrian hit by the vehicle not run over by the vehicle so this option is also false okay right so these are about the bumper injuries these are the questions these are the questions from the topic dermatology so i'll be back with another video on uh, the toxicology questions thank you